from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Chapter 13, verse 1, it reads like this. It says, and now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Man Manson, who had been brought up with Herod the Terex, and Saul. Verse 2 says, while they were worshiping, the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to say that again. While they were worshiping and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. So after that, they had fasted and prayed. They placed their hands on them and they sent them off. I want you to, to look at your neighbor and says the Holy Spirit speaks to the church. And you are the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. The Holy Spirit speaks to the church. We are the church. So we have to come expecting God to speak to us. Don't look at your problems or your issues or wherever you, you've blown it or, or made mistakes. You know, what you've got to do is let the Holy Spirit speak to you. He's not done with you. He's not done with you. You may think so, but God knows he's not done with you. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Praise the Lord. God is a good God, and uh, we're, we're, uh, I'm grateful. Amen. I'm grateful. I don't, I don't want to, I, I know my wife, she's been working with children, but you want to come and say something to the people today, Sister Mary, we've been here for 25 years, and uh, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been preaching and ministering, and I haven't done this stuff on my own. My wife has uh, been with us, and uh, she's been down in the children ministry, trying to get the children ministry established, and uh, uh, I'm going to let her talk to you a little bit. Amen. To God be the glory. God is just so, so faithful. I'm just so grateful to God. He's been so true to his word when he sent us out. And I thank my husband. I thank my husband for going into the men's home and letting God do the work in his life. I say to the men's and the women's home because I know it's, we're, we're live. Man, you're standing in the gap for your family, for your children. You know, and some of you guys are our parents, amen, and some of you guys are believing for your children, and some of you guys are believing for your parents, and I'm just so grateful. God has gave us a promise that he's going to give us treasure out of darkness, hidden, riches stored in secret places, that he may know that he is the Lord that called us by name. We're not on assignment on, in the flesh. We're on an assignment that call, God has called us to. We came here 25 years ago. 25 years ago with an 8-year-old and a 14-year-old, and we had four people with us. And look what God has done. We had no building. We had no buildings. We started the church on the side of the house in the yard. And I'm just so grateful for my husband saying yes. We got to continue to say yes to God. I'm so grateful for him going into the men's home and I get an opportunity to work with women and gang girls and serve in the kids gang for God's glory and God's honor. And we, we're not doing this by ourselves. It's not just me and Dan. I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank God for your faithfulness to the ministry. Many souls are here because of you guys. You took the promise personally and said that, God, you're going to give me treasures, not trash. We're letting people know you're not trash. You are a true treasure. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I'm just so grateful. And I say happy 25th anniversary to us. To us. Come on, stand up and give the Lord a praise clap. I say happy 25th fifth anniversary to us, to us, to us. We're 
you're saying, not on our watch, you're not going to have my children. Not on our watch, you're not going to have my mom or my dad. Not on my watch. And I, like I said, it's happy 25th anniversary to us. And, and it's not, we, I'm believing God for 50 more years, amen. <laughs> Whatever I have to do, I'm just a servant of the most high God. I just want to be a servant. I want to be a vessel that God could use for his glory and honor. And I thank God for my children and my grandchildren. You know, I just thank God for what he's doing. The only thing I asked God for when we came, my husband's pr prayer, pr prayer was protect, uh, bless my children. My prayer was protect my family. And he's been faithful through gun violence, through uh, being robbed, doing, through many different things. Things God has protected us. And like I say, happy 25th anniversary to us and to God be the glory. We're going to continue on. I love you. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, act like you're ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Uh, we've got so much to do. I know this is a big, big week, but uh, we, uh, we, um, the reason why I read you that scripture openly, uh, I want you to understand how important it is that the Holy Spirit speaks to the church. We're so used to operating from the chapter one, chapter two, the first three or four chapters in uh, the book of uh, Acts that, you know, how the Holy Spirit moved and how the Holy Spirit was birthed and all of these different things that have happened. Uh, and then, then we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and you shall be my witnesses throughout Jerusalem, Judea, and the other most parts of the earth. We, we, we realize how the Holy Spirit moves and all of these different things, but we have to realize the importance of the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit, I mean, allowing your ears to hear from the Holy Spirit, because when you hear from the Holy Spirit, it breaks things in your life, because the Holy Spirit is a breaker. I don't think that you realize that. I'm going to teach you that this morning. The Holy Spirit is a breaker. Now, I, I, I want you to realize that it was the Holy Spirit, listen to this, that draw you to the Father. That's how you receive salvation. It was something on the inside of you that kept tugging you. You it kept tugging you and tugging you to come to Jesus. Now, many people ministered to you and talked to you. Tried to get your head right. Tried to get your heart right. That didn't work with their uh, great words. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came and He began to minister to you. And He used certain people. They were handpicked. They were handpicked to come into your life and to minister to you. You probably wouldn't have picked them, but the Holy Spirit picked them. And somehow they got to you, and they start ministering to you. They got, in, they got through the crowd. They got through all of those little things, those little stuff that, that, that holds you back, and, and, and places where people, you wouldn't even allow people to get to. But the Holy Spirit was smart enough to get certain people to your life. It could have been your grandma. It could have been your auntie. It could have been your friend. It could have been your neighbor could have been your school teacher it could have been anybody somebody that the holy spirit handpicked and all of a sudden they came to you and they start ministering to you and you didn't even know that they were ministering to you they were just filling a gap that you needed for that season they were just talking to you and you were like wow man you know i really need that and our times you know we say that you know we say that's dope or we say uh, that that's real talk or we say this that and the other but somehow it got through to you Come on, talk to me. Somehow it got through to you, and the Holy Spirit draws you because the Father says this. The Bible says this. You can't even come to the Father unless you're drawn by him. Listen to this. You can't even accept Jesus unless you're drawn. Because we're the kind of people that will jump over Jesus to get to God. Come on, come on. You, you will jump. We're like, man, you know, I know you died for me, but I'm out to him because he can bless me. Come on, talk to me a little bit. You, you ever been to a place like that? You, you'll jump on. I, I'm from a neighborhood where if you ain't the man, then we don't even want to talk to you. Come on, talk to me, right? And, and sometimes when you think like that, it can mess you up. 
See, and you lose position. See, what's going on, a lot of times we serve God, we come and we, 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 we get a hold of God, but we don't even know what drawed us to God. So the Holy Spirit is a cycle breaker. According to Micah uh, chapter 2 and, and right around uh, 15 and 13, it talks about God is a breaker. And what that means is that he goes before us and he breaks up territory. That means that this is, this is what he does. He takes off. That means before he sends you to live your life, what God does is that he goes before you and he makes your crooked place straight. You can't do that. You'll work four jobs, you'll work five jobs trying to straighten things out in your life, and you can't do it. You're just wearing yourself out if you don't allow God to go before you. Amen. The Bible says that if I be for you, that's what it says. God says, if I be for you, who could be against you? That means that, you know what, nobody can stop God for what he's about to do inside of your life. Nobody can stop that. No matter how much they hate on you, how much they dislike you, how much, you know what, they don't want to see you succeed, but nobody can stop God from what he's about to do inside of your life. No matter how messed up you used to be and people will say you don't deserve to be blessed like that, you don't deserve a family like that, you don't deserve this and you don't deserve, you don't deserve that house, you don't deserve to be in a car. Look at all the people you hurt in your past. God says that I've forgiven you for that. I, come on. I, I've changed your life. I've justified your ways. And now I've got to go before you. See, the reason why he goes before you is because he clears out your path. There's giants in your way that you cannot get over. The Bible says that Barnabas and Paul was at a church. They was there for years, but they didn't get there on their own. The Bible says that they had to go through some things before they got to this church in Antioch where people first called them Christians. They never called Barnabas and Paul Christians because those were two businessmen. Barnabas and Paul were, were, were different kinds of guys. The Bible says that, that, that uh, Paul, Saul at that time, was a devout Jew, and, and he hated Christians. But he knew how to take care of himself. I said he knew how to take care of himself. And you know what he did? He had a job. He had a business that he created and made tents. Right? And Barnabas was a real estate tycoon. He had properties. He owned properties. And he did different things. And he gave. Listen to this. Barnabas was wild. He was the type of guy that if a pledge was going on, he would give you his whole house. He was like, what, 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 what does they need? You know, you said 10000 That's what they're picking up, 10000 for the new building? He said, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give them a whole house. That's what Barnabas did. I know some of you probably are like, wow. But that's biblical. That's what he said. He said he gave the whole house to the proceeds of the church, and he never looked back to see what they were doing with the money. And he never let anybody out talk him for the giving his house. Because he knew if God gave it to him, God would give him more. So, so here it was, the Holy Spirit came in the church. And that's why you got to get away. You, you just got to let God do what he's got to do. That's why you have to get away from people when it comes down to the Holy Spirit speaking. Because the Holy Spirit will speak, but somebody else will come and talk you out of what the Holy Spirit is doing. I give you a, a great example. John the Baptist tried to talk himself out of, listen to this. He, he, he said this, talk himself out. He tried to talk himself out of knowing what Jesus had did for him. The voice crying out in the wilderness. Here it was. He was saying, if that's you or should I look for another? John the Baptist was talking himself out of knowing Jesus. He'd been knowing Jesus his whole life. But here it is. At the end of his race, he started trying to talk himself out of was this Jesus or was I just fooling myself? He saw all of those miracles, but now he's going to say, should I look for another? Jesus told him, he said, yeah, it's him. The one that's opening the blind eyes, the one that's raising the people from the dead. Yeah, that's him. That's him. I am he. And John the Baptist went on and uh, they, they murdered John the Baptist, but he had to have a confirmation at the end of his walk. And the only one that confirmed it was the Holy Spirit. No matter how much you talk, or no matter how much you, you operate, you have to understand that the status quo of God 
it's going to be like this. And I'm just going to tell you, this is the status of God. And, and some of us, we, we need to realize, and we talked a little about it Friday night, but some of us need to realize that God is a provider. And he's holy. Once God provides, everything that he provides for you is already in position. Mm. When he said that he wanted to save Dan, everything was in position. I just had to get to the place where he wanted me to be. I, I had to get to Victory Outreach. I, it was there in Victory Outreach that God wanted to save my life. He wanted to do a work in my family, and, and he wanted to do a work in me. But I was so busy trying to follow everybody and do what everybody else was saying, I couldn't hear the Holy Spirit. So here it was. The Holy Spirit was trying to draw me and get this. Here I am in a room with a friend of mine. I thought that I met him because I wanted to become an actor. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I wanted to be an actor, and my friend, I met my friend, and uh, I met a friend of mine by the name of Kenny Roberts. He's, he's a friend of mine. He's, we've been friends forever. And uh, I remember he used to take me to uh, his acting classes, and he'll be sitting there acting. And I was like, boy, this boy, no, he can lie, right? <laughs> and so we, he took me to uh, his acting class, and he was sitting down, and he just started acting. And I said, wow, that's how you be coming up with those good lies like that. And so he was sitting down, and he was trying out for a movie with uh, this lady. I don't know if you remember her name. is Goldie Hawn, <laughs> right? And uh, she made a movie called uh, The Wildcats. It was about a high school football way back in the day. And he was trying out for the movie. He says, I want to I bring you with me because you tall, and they might let you play. They might let you get in the movie. <laughs> and I was like, man, this guy always lies. So we get in here, and we see all of these actors and Wesley Snipes and all these people. That I'm like, wow. I said, oh, okay, this guy wasn't lying. He for real. So he's doing his thing. He's acting and all of these different stuff. And uh, uh, he gets the part. He's in the movie. Then he gets in another movie with uh, Sean Penn called Bad Boys. You probably heard of that. His role is that somebody was going to come into the lunchroom and hit him with a, uh, a, a, a tray. They was in an Audi home. And, he, and, and his role, when Sean Penn walked through uh, getting his lunch, the guy hit him with a, a tray, and uh, he was the one got hit with a tray, and, and he said, hey, man, why you hit me with the tray? And that's all he had. That's a, his whole role. <laughs> but, but the thing, he was in the movie <laughs> called Bad Boys, and then there was another movie called 16 Candles. I mean, you ever heard of that one? So, so he was in all of these different movies. He used to take me to the, to the cast. I never got the role. I'd get to the last one, and then they said, no, you didn't make it. No, you didn't make it. No, otherwise I'd have been an actor instead of a preacher. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has a way of getting so. I'm thinking that I got to connect. This guy's going to hook me up with Hollywood. Right? I, I'm thinking that's where we're going. We're going to Hollywood. You know, we're not going to, we, we're going to leave baseball. And, you know, because my baseball dream was dying out. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do this. So I'm thinking that this guy, this is what, you know, I don't, I don't know the Lord back then. So I'm thinking that this is the connection. So one day. We was now this is before Christ. You know, one day we was doing bad. I can't tell you what we was doing. We doing bad. He breaks open the Bible, and he said, "This is my first time ever being around any friend of mine with an open Bible." And he started talking about how Jesus loved me. This was uh, uh maybe about 27, 28 years ago. And uh, we were sitting in that room, and he said, man, Jesus loves us. Those guys don't know us like that. He says, I don't know why God telling me to tell you this. And he opened it up to John 3, 16. He said, God loved you, man. He loves you. Stop acting like that. I think I was having some tough times, and he just opened up the Bible. And he just started talking to me about the Bible. And my life never been the same since that day. <laughs> since that day. I never went and told my other friends because they wouldn't have never understood. So I'm sitting there and I, I'm like, man, what am I going to do now that, you know, I, I realized and he, and he was trying to lead me to the Lord, but I didn't understand. And I told him, I said, you need to shut that Bible, man, because we, 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 we doing wrong right now. And he says, God knows our heart. And he starts saying stuff like that. And I was like, no, man, we can't do it. So we stopped. But he was the one that the Holy Spirit used to draw me. I thought that he was 
trying to hook me up with Hollywood, but he was trying to hook me up with Jesus. That was his only assignment was to get me to Jesus because as soon as he got me to Jesus, there was a big gulf between me and him. It's like, it's like it was over with after that. But we remained friends. I was in this wedding, the best man in his wedding. I was a whole bunch of stuff at his wedding. But the thing it was was that we're still friends today, but the thing it is, he thinks that he didn't do anything. But he really didn't know that he gave me one of the biggest blessings of my family's life was to introduce me to Jesus. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because when the, this is the status of the Holy Spirit. God is a provider. He'll provide you a way out of every situation, every temptation, everything. God provides. Somebody say God provides. He provides. He provides everything. And now you have to understand when God provides it for you, it's there for your getting. But you can't get it unless you're in the right position. He said this is, what, this is the year of position. You can't get it unless you're in the right position position. We can't get nothing that God has for us until we get in position. That's why every word that you're hearing, every theme, every it has something to do with getting in position. Because if we don't get in position, we won't be able to do what God has called us to do. The church at Antioch wanted, God wanted that to be the first place that the Holy Spirit could speak in. Now, you're probably saying, why, why do you want Antioch to be the first place? Because that was the first place that everybody was identified as Christ followers. Everybody else in the neighborhood called those people something else. They was like Jesus, the, the way people and stuff like that. So here it was, we find out that the status of the Holy Spirit is God. Listen to this. God, the provider, and he's always holy. Can he say Amen. This is what he does. He provides and he's holy. He don't mess with sin. God don't fool with sinners. But he provides a way out for them. He loves them, but he don't fool with them. Because the reason why he don't fool with them, because he'd have to kill you. He's too holy. And he's already set premier, uh, 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 parameters that, that sin cannot come towards where he at. He's got angels right there that sin. Sin can't even come. They got to go through so much before they can get to God. Stay with me here. Now, now you got the Holy, you got, you got, you got God, the other part of, I mean, Jesus, the other part of the Godhead. I'm going someplace with this. The other part of the Godhead. And what's going to happen here is that God provided a way out, you out of your sin. So that means that he didn't want you to die like that. So he provided a way. He sent Jesus. God so loved the world that he what? God so loved the world that he gave what? He provided a way for you. He made a way for you. He gave you salvation. You didn't deserve it, but he made a way for you. He hooked you up. We messed it up. We've blown it so many times. And I'm trying to put this ele in elementary terms for you. Now, here it is. We got to learn how to deal with the Godhead. Now, Jesus came and he died for us. Not only did he die for us, stay with me here. The Bible says that he finished the work in you. Here it is again. God providing a way for you. Jesus, listen, has finished the work for you. And now here it is. You got to know where it's at. You got to know where he did it at. You got to know where he, he's changing you at and he's working in your life. You got to know this. So what happens is that after Jesus finished, the Bible says that he sat down at the right hand side of God. Work was done. So if you're looking for Jesus, you're going to find him sitting down next to God. He's sitting down. He's chilling. He finished his ministry. He finished his task. It's over. His job was God providing a way for you that you could come out of what you were in. And Jesus died for you on the third day. God rose him from the dead. Now here it is. You have that resurrection power on the inside of you. Now here it is. Now get catch this. Now the third part of the Godhead is this. This is the Holy Spirit. God says that I'm going to send a comforter to you. Why am I going to send a comforter to you? Because I know you're going to be messed up. I know you're going to go through it. I know you're going to get saved and want to go back to your old lifestyle. 
I know you're going to get saved and you're still hooked on some of the things that you used to do. You believe me, but you can't, you can't believe me to take this stuff out of your life. I know you're still in love with your old boo. I know you're still like those Newports. I know you're still like that Henny. Come on, talk to me. And you're struggling. You want to stop, but you can't. You know it's wrong, but you can't. You can't. You know gambling is wrong, but you stay on the boat. We laugh at it, but listen to this. Jesus died that we can come out of that. But we're stuck because we're thinking that, that we can get ahead if we allow ourselves to get what it wants. Stay with me. I'm, I'm going to a place that we're going to bring this home. Now, the reason why the Holy Spirit is job, listen to this, is the only one that's left active. Current. It's the current. Because the Holy Spirit is active. That's the part of the Godhead that's still unlimited, still all knowing, still omnipotent. Come on. You know what I mean? Still, you know what I mean? He's still got, he still owns everything. He's still God. There's nothing that the Holy Spirit can't do. He's equal in all of their ways. They just had different functions in your life. God is a creator, holy, and a provider. The, the, uh, Jesus came to die. He was came. That's what we call him, the sacrificial lamb. When nobody else going to die for you? Not your mom, your dad. I'm, I don't want to be graphic, but nobody was going to die in your place. They got, they'll get over you. You die. I, I guarantee you, your parents will get over you. You die. Your, your, your children will get over you. Your dad will get over you, and they'll get over you, dad. After a while, they'll start operating, and, and they'll forget that you even existed. So Jesus, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Let's stay with me here. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is so good that sometimes we forget that he existed, that he died for us. Forget about your parents. You forget that Jesus exists. Some of the stuff that we do. The Bible says that we have to love our parents more than we love, I mean, I love Jesus more than we love our, uh, our parents and our family members. But some of us don't act like that. We love them more than we love Jesus. That's not biblical. That's why you don't have a relationship. It's not biblical. It's a lot of unbiblical things that we do. Like talking out of turn. That's unbiblical, especially when you don't know what you're talking about. So let's think like this. Stay here. Let's think like this. When the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to the church, the church has to be in position to hear. Friday night I talked about when we saw the Nassau rocket going off there in uh, 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 Florida, in St. Augustine, Florida. It's because we were in position. You can never hear the Holy Spirit if you're not in position. You can never hear the Holy Spirit when you're not in position. You can, you can talk, you can come to church buildings all you want. But one thing will happen, if you're out of position, your, your ear will be dull. And people will get in your ear and tell you things, and, and you're listening more to them than you can hear from God. That's why a lot of times we never fulfill the plan that God has for our life. We fulfill what others want us to do, but never what God wants us to do. Who's the first person you're going to see when you die? The Bible says you're going to see him, right? And then it's going to be judgment. What did you do on earth? Do you realize what judgment is? It's for eternity. Whether you're going to spend the rest of your life. That, that judgment is eternity. So here it is. We find out that the Holy Spirit is active in our life. So he speaks to the church. Whenever he speaks to the church, he'll say, now separate me, Paul and Barnabas, so I can break the cycle in their lives. Separate me, Paul and Barnabas, so I can break cycles with their life. They were teaching a whole year. A whole year. They made disciples. They did all that. So it lets you know when you're in the church, you should be making disciples less than a year. These guys were business guys. They left their job to come into the church. How did they get in the church? They got saved just like we did. They got saved. And when they got saved, something happened. Something happened on the inside of them. The Holy Spirit was active. 
That means that when the Holy Spirit got active, they start telling them there's cities to take. There's neighborhoods that we got to go to. There's places that we got to go to that we never went to before. And so they start operating. And you notice that they start talking about the people that was there in the church in Antioch, Niger, and, and Simon, and all of these different people. One of the reasons why they were talking about those people, because those folks got saved and they came into the house of the God. And listen to this. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to them, and he starts giving them assignments. And when he started giving them, they didn't get excitement from the preacher. The preacher just ministered about the vision of the house, and everybody was catching the dream. So now you can't catch a dream. You can't catch visions if the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to you. Yeah, I'm telling you some people of God, the Holy Spirit is in you, but sometimes we can't hear him because we cloud him out. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that he said that he would send you a comforter. That means that we all have him. We all have him, but do we listen to him? I said we all have him, but do we listen to him? Mm. So when you think of this, the Bible says the breaker goes before and he clears out the way. When he starts cleaning out the way, you know what he's cleaning out the way for? For you to be successful in everything that you do. You know what he's cleaning out the way for? That you can go through neighborhoods and break the back of poverty. You know what poverty is? Listen to this. It means this. Listen to what it says. Someone who likes unusual money and material possessions. Someone who likes the usual money that they should have, they don't have it. And they don't have no source of getting it. They don't have material things. They don't have any source of getting it. That, that means that they live in poverty. That means this. Listen to this. This is what they're going to face if, if people don't rise up to help them. If, they don't, if they don't, people don't rise up to help them, they're going to have no health benefits, Sh uh, no shelter, no education. They'll be standing in line for the food bank. Scarcity of basic needs and basic foods. Clean water like they have in Michigan. They don't have clean water. It looks like clay when it comes through the pipes. And that's the whole state. We have a governor. We have presidents. And they still got bad water. Kansas City has some of the good, best water. Kansas City has some of the best food banks. Kansas City has a whole lot of things. But it's not, listen to this, it's not taking away poverty. Satan wants us as kingdom kids to live in poverty. I'm going to say this. I know you don't want to hear it, but I'm gonna, we're going to break this thing today. Satan wants you to live below what God has for you. And the reason why he sets it up, because when you come to the house of God, we run around and we shout and we do everything and we go back home broke. We dance and we shout, we jump, and we go back home broke. Still in that cycle. Because everybody's afraid to preach about money or, 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 or trying to help you come out of that bad thing. Thinking that the preacher wants something from you. I told the church last night, me and my walk, wife walked away from over $100,000 back in 1995 to start this church. We didn't come here broke. We didn't come here with our hand out begging. We came here because God sent us. The Holy Spirit spoke to that man, Pastor Nick, and said, hey, now separate me, Dan and Mary, for the work of the ministry. And I'm going to tell you this. We were only two and, a, what, two years, 11 months old. Matter of fact, put that picture back up there. That 25 picture, somebody, they back in and they sleep. Oh, okay. You see that? I look better than that now. Me and my wife, look at us. That's when we were real young, man. I'm talking like real young. Like young, like young. Yes, I was about 29. 20, yeah, and, and listen, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that God separated us. 
And when he separated us, he knew exactly what he was going to do. We were young people with big visions. Big visions. Nobody believed in what we were talking about. And the reason why they didn't believe it, because they never heard it before. Especially these young people like this, talking about they're going to do this and all of these different things. And people actually were with us. You know, when the people walked away, they tried to, just, all kinds of crazy stuff, man. It could have brought me down. But I knew that God was breaking the cycle in my family's life and in our life. And God was raising me up. And, and I didn't know, listen, I knew one thing, that I was never going to leave God no matter what I had to face. So here it is. Where do we start our ministry at? An absolute poverty. Absolute. When I mean absolute, that means scarce. We used to have church, listen to this, in the house on Kensington. We used to preach like, 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 like it was uh, like we had uh, a big old congregation. It was maybe about six or seven of us there. And the reason why we would do that, because we knew what God wanted to do. It was just a matter of time before he started drawing people by his spirit. It was just a matter of time that people start listening. See, you have to understand when God gets ready for something, he doesn't, he doesn't, he, he takes his time because he's being patient with us. We've got so many things that we've got to answer to when we see him on why we didn't do certain things and we knew better. There's so many things that we're going to answer to. Luke chapter 4 verses 18 says this, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this thing home to you. It says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to who? What does it say? Come on, talk to me. What does it say? What does he anoint the church to preach the gospel to who? Why? So he could break the back of poverty inside of the house because every kingdom child don't need to be known as a broke scandal. It messes up what people believe. That's why you find out there's so many people that's out in the world that think they're better than you because of your status quo. God doesn't want you to operate like you don't have it. You do have it. You just got to find out where it's at and how to get it. Can I hear you say amen? And how do you get it? It's the Holy Spirit. He's active. You got to quit saying Jesus this and Jesus that. You, ain't nothing wrong with Jesus. Jesus did his job. But you got to say, Holy Spirit, come on, Holy Spirit, release me. Release what happened, with, what belongs to me. Holy Spirit, help me find what God has given me. Because if you don't help me find it, I'll never find my gift. I'll never discover who I am. I'll never get to where I'm supposed to be. Everybody, Jesus is sitting down. Jesus ain't doing no more work for you. I said, Jesus is not doing no more work for you. He, you, you, he did it. He died for you. Now it's time for you to get up. Come on, somebody better hear this. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks to the church, reminding you what Jesus did, reminding you of every promise, reminding you where your stuff is, reminding you how to rebuke the devil, reminding you how to break cycles. Remind, it's the Holy Ghost. And it's a lot of times our people don't want to mess with the Holy Ghost because he convicts people of their sin. You don't want to fool with somebody, like right, man? You hanging out and you feeling good. You just got out of church and then all of a sudden here he comes. You got to stop doing this. You got to stop doing that. You got to stop doing this. You can't do that no longer. Respect that brother. Respect that sister. So you don't want to go pray because you know who you're going to have to answer to. The Holy Ghost. Jesus has done his job. He's sitting down. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts you. He's active. I said he's active. Jesus ain't getting back on the cross for none of you. That's a done deal. I said that's a done deal. He died for you. He resurrected for you. He's given you power. Can he, he sent you the comforter. Come on. You just got to know. You just got to know without a shadow of a doubt. He's done it all already. I've got to operate in what God has given me. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm operating in what God has given me. I'm not asking Jesus to get back up on the cross. He did it. 
It's worked. I'm done. I'm saved. Now you know what I got to do? I got to walk in it. Come on, just like that movie. Now walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Like you walking out of cramp. You got to walk it out. Come on, come on, somebody. Like you walking out of cramp. You get up in the middle of the light and it hurts. Walk it out. That's how it is. That's how it is when you get saved. You don't walk it out. You're just going to be sitting there. Oh, 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 oh. Everything going to hurt. Every time you got to do something, it's going to hurt. I remember one night I was on, I was up watching TV and uh, I'm going to bring it home. I'm going to cut this short and I'll bring it back to you another time because I see y'all want barbecue more about it than the word. I got a lot more. You don't want to turn me loose because I'll have you crying in a minute. Seriously, seriously. I was watching TV the other night. Mm. See, I was watching TV. It was, it was crazy. I was up one night. I always watch ESPN twice before I go to bed. My wife got it. I watch it two times. So if somebody call me, I'll, I'll catch anything that I missed. And my wife be like, turn off the TV, turn off the TV, turn off the TV, turn off the TV. She, I, she can't sleep with the, the TV on. I'm like, well, you know, I got I to gotta get my ESPN fix. You know, I watch it. I watch, I probably watch ESPN more than I watch probably anything. I just, oh Lord, this is my, that's my bad thing. It's my bad, it's bad, right? So anyway, I, I'm, 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 I'm up, I'm watching this thing, and it comes on. And every, all you guys probably saw this. It says, Hey, my name is Billy, uh, what do you call it? Billy, Billy Joe. And I have this cleanser. You, you probably, I'm just paraphrasing it now. I have this cleanser that it could clean out any spot. And I'm like, man, all of a sudden, you know, he cleans out something real dirty. And I'm like, oh my God, he got that with that stuff? I says, and he says, it's only 1995, and it got my attention. And I said, okay, 1995. I says, you know what I'm going to do? I says, uh, uh, I'm going to buy it. So I put my credit card, and I'm getting ready to get this stuff from the house and the church. And then I said, then he said, oh, but wait a minute. There's more. And, and, and I'm like, what? And then he says, well, you'll get two more bottles and a free delivery if you do it this way, if you buy it right now. And then I get ready to rip out my credit card. Come on, talk to me a little bit. I get ready to rip out my credit card. Then he comes back and he says, there's more. I'm like, man, how much more am I get? And then he says, well, I'll give you two more bottles plus these free knives if you order right now. And I was like, okay, let me hurry and get this thing. This is a good deal. So I'm trying to get this thing. And then all of a sudden, it, then all of a sudden, he says, but there's more. And then all of a sudden, then he says, the delivery would be free to you. If you act right now, I'm like, shoot, I got to hurry up. Why do I got to hurry up? Because I'm going to miss out on this deal if I don't do it right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. If I don't do it right now. You know, and, and I began to look at this thing and I was like, man, you know, it can clean up your mess. It'll clean up all of this stuff. And how am I going to get this stuff done if I do it right now? Somebody say, do it right now. Do it right now. Somebody say, do it right now. <laughs> this is crazy here. Malachi says this. This is what it says. It says, we have this word. Listen to this. I mean, in Proverbs, I'm sorry. It says that if you act now, there's going to be more. That's what the Proverbs writer says. If you move now, it's going to be more. Stay with me. The Malachi says, bring the whole tithe. Stay with me here. You want to break poverty in your life? He says, bring the whole tithe. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to make it real simple to you. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And he says, improve me now wherewith that I'm the Lord of hosts. If there will not be an open window for you, that I will pour out a blessing. And there will not be room enough for you to receive it. Listen to what he says he's going to do. This is it. And there's more. Somebody say, and there's more. And he says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Isn't it something how God does things for us and not for him? He says that the devil ain't messing with my money. He's messing with yours. 
He says, if you do this, I'll do it for your sake. And somebody shout, there's, and there's more. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before their time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. I want you to understand. Somebody said there's more. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says this. But this is what I say, which he that soweth sparingly. Come on, don't say it slow. Also, listen to this. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Well, I want you to wait a minute. There's more. He says that if you sow little, you're going to get a little. But get the results. If you sow bountifully, you're going to get a lot. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe God because God is his word. And his word never comes by void. Heaven and earth and all your stuff is going to pass away. But the, what the Bible says, my word forever. Stay with me. I know you don't want to receive. That's why you don't like the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost knows that you got a problem with him. He knows you got issues with him. Because what it is is that he comes and he convicts. And when he convicts a believer, it's different than convicting. Get this. When he, collects, and when he convicts a believer, it's different than convicting an unbeliever. See, an unbeliever, you know what I mean, it's, it's like it'll lead him to godly sorrow, you know what I mean, and, and he'll get saved, give his life. But to, a, to, a, to, a, to a, 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 a believer, you know what a believer does? Man, it's like it's straight to the heart, like, tush, like God, that hurt. It hurts. And why does it hurt so bad? Because you knew better. You knew better and you did it anyway. I'm not leaving you, but I'm going to let you know. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But you knew that was wrong. And you knew it was sin. But you kept doing it expecting me not to say nothing. But I'm going to say something. And everywhere you go, this is the Holy Ghost. Because he's omnipresent. Everywhere you go, I'm going to remind you of what you've done wrong. Because I love you that much. You can't get away from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that John Mark was called that day when Paul and, Paul and uh, uh, Barnabas was called out of that church to go and do work. Stay with me here. You know, John Mark and Paul got into an argument about the world. The Holy Spirit was trying to convict this third waiver, but he wouldn't listen. And he ended up going back, and Barnabas departed from Paul so that he can go and minister to that guy. But that was a dangerous move on Barnabas' behalf. Dang, what I mean by dangerous is that you don't follow people that's going to the world. It was dangerous, but Barnabas had enough God in him. See, because I'm going to put it like this. When you start wanting to fool around with the devil, I'm not following you the way you're going. I got enough God in me, but I'm not following you the way you're going. Because I've already told you to stop, and this is as far as I'm going to go. You know, a lot of times people follow folks, and then they end up falling off themselves. Maybe a week later, maybe two weeks later, maybe a month later, but you end up giving in to the same thing or watching the same stuff that you were trying to get somebody else to stop doing. Listening to the same song, you was like, man, you know, you bumping your head, and all, and all of a sudden now you're listening to what they're listening to. You're doing what they do. Here we go. Somebody said, and there's more. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10 says this. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit. Somebody say first fruit. I heard a word Friday night from Pastor Jose when he was uh, ministering, picking up the tithes and offering, and I gave from my first fruit, I, I, I sowed a seed because, not because he's, he's my son in the faith, it's because the word touched my heart. And I says, I'm going to step out in faith and sow a seed. It ain't got nothing to do with my pledge. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm just sowing a seed. Sometimes when the Lord touch you, you got to obey what the Holy Spirit is telling you because you never know what he's setting you up for. <laughs> yeah. 
Come on, I think that this here is too much. Listen, listen to what it says in Luke uh, 6.38. It says, give it and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man give into your bosom. For with the same measurement that you, you give, it shall be measured back to you. Come on, somebody say, there's more. I want you to understand some people of God. Whenever you're trying to break poverty, God gives you a way of breaking it. But it's going to be up for you to respond. He says, now separate me, what, Paul and, and Barnabas for the work of the ministry. Now, why did he say separate me? Because you got to come from among, among people in order to do what God is calling you to do. If you stick around the same people that's challenging you not to do the same stuff, Listen to me, my friend. It was a blessing for me and my wife to be able to be on the same, listen, it's the same one accord serving God. That ain't always like that. There'll be one person want to serve God and, and, and then one person don't want to serve God. Or one person struggling and then one person that don't. You know, it's, it's, it's a little weird how it happens. And I'm, what I'm saying to you is this. When God is trying to do something, you got to get yourself ready because here it is. Go ahead and play softly. Here it is. When he's trying to get you someplace, I want you to understand something. He'll tell you where it is, and he'll say, this is how we're going to break poverty. Here we go. How are we going to break it? Well, the Bible says this in Deuteronomy 28. It says, the Lord has commanded blessings upon thee. In their storehouses. What I mean by commanded? He means he's commanded things to bless you. That's all you got to do is keep following him. He's commanded things to bless you. you, you you're in certain places and there are certain things that's going to scream out to you. You own me. This is yours. You ever walked into a place and you wanted to buy a car and then that car was just looking at you saying, this is yours. I don't, I don't know. Some of you probably don't. Yeah, 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 there you go. I got a sister. I, I thank that. I thank God for that. See, there you go. She now, now she say, she say, she walked in the place, and she said, "This is the Holy Spirit said, this is your house." Many of you, you're gonna walk in the place. God's gonna command it to bless you. It don't want to bless you, but it's, it has to. Some of you gonna walk in Bank America, and Bank America gonna say, "I gotta bless you." You're gonna walk in the U.S. Bank, and he's gonna say, "I gotta bless you." The Holy Spirit then already spoke to a bank that says they're going to give us $2 million. I don't know which bank it is. But when I walk in there, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to fill it. I'm going to fill it. And each bank that I walk in from now on out, I'm going to come in there with my briefcase. Because I, you, you think I'm playing. I ain't playing. And soon as they give it to me, I'm going to walk to the bank that never gave it to me. I'm going to draw all of our money out. I'm going to say, you never liked us. You never believed in our vision in the first place. Give me every dime right now. We're going over there. They believed in us. The reason why I'm telling you this is that God commands things to bless you. He's commanding some college to pay for your tuition for you. He's commanding some job to give you a check every week. That people don't like you. Don't think those the owners like you. Those owners don't like you at those companies. God is commanding them to bless you. Give them this check every week. Because anything over what I tell you to do it might mess him or her up. So just give this amount. And they, they don't know why they don't want to give you a raise. They don't know why they don't want to do certain things, but God commands the blessings upon your life. Not only does he commands it, but get this. He said that you'll get these things if you walk in his ways. You'll get them. And poverty will be broken. You'll be able to have clean water. You'll be able to have good food. You know, you know the crazy part about being blessed and breaking poverty is that you can pick what you want to eat. You can pick where you live. How many of you want to pick where you live? I want to pick where I live. 
How many of you want to tell the truth on your applications for your loans? I want to tell the truth. I don't want my cousins co-signing for me. My mama co-signing for me. And anybody that ain't saved, I don't want co-signing for me. I'm going to tell you why. When you use a person that's unsaved, I know the scripture says it's storing up for the wicked. You know what I mean? The wicked stores up money for the righteous and all of that stuff. I mean, the reason why you don't, you don't use people that ain't saved, because they won't respect the kingdom. What did God do for you? You got to borrow money from me. You down at that church all the time. You asking me for gas money. This is why you got to break poverty. Because people will never respect your church and respect you. That's why we're going to build a, a, a great facility. That's why you walk up in here, it's all class. You know, that's why you walk up in here and all of our stuff is paid off. That's why you walk in here, everything we do. We're doing a, a first class event for our church at the downtown Marriott, the biggest hotel in the city. In the city. We grab the biggest ballroom. Listen, and I'm going to tell you, this event is costing us $30,000 plus. Shame on you if you don't show up. We're rolling out the red carpet, and we're going to get down. We've got people coming from all across the, the world that's going to be with us. And it's up to you if you want to be. Because, you know, one thing I love about God is that God has people everywhere. You don't have to worry about being nice to somebody to try and keep them. Because the devil's never nice to you and you stay with him. I'm not being, I stayed with the devil a long time, boy. Me and him, we hung out and I drank everything. He says, well, you can't get the high end stuff, get the low end stuff. You know, you, you're all the way down here now. I'm not going to respect you up here. So get that cheap stuff. I'm just trying to ruin your life. I ain't going to waste no money on you. Then you'd be walking around here with asking for cigarette butts and 22 ounces of cold bud. Uh, and even Budweiser, it's cold bud. <laughs> Devil done jack you up. And in your mind, you know what I mean? You, you mess around with cats. They ain't got no benefits. You know what I mean? He, your teeth, you got a, if you needed a Tylenol, he couldn't even buy it. Your tooth are hurting in the middle of the night. He can't even take you to the doctor. He got to ask you for your keys. Or vice versa. She can't cook you a meal. She don't know what to do. I'm telling you, this is how you break poverty's back. You allow the Holy Spirit to be active in your life. And when he's active in your life, he's going to lead you to all truth. And if there's anything that you don't understand, he will teach you. You ain't got to worry about no church. You ain't got to worry about what the preacher is preaching. You ain't got to say, oh, man, you know what? This, this church ain't, 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 don't give me enough word. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You just ain't got enough Holy Spirit. Because I'm going to tell you this. Any church will work if you got the Holy Spirit. But if you ain't know somebody to tell you something that you don't know and you ain't applying what you've already learned, it still ain't going to work. I'm gonna <laughs> There's something about God. I need the worship team to come. Listen to what it says here. If God told you before, and He's told you this before, if God can get, if He can't get a blessing through you, He will quit sending it to you. Stay with me here. I'm going to leave you with this. If I can't get a blessing through you, I'm going to quit sending it to you. And the reason why you have to break the back of poverty, because don't nobody think you could do it anyway. Some of your single moms, they don't think you're going to win. You got to show them that you're going to win. How you show them is that I've got the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. That's how you win. For the last 25 years, I've been trusting the Holy Ghost. I haven't been trusting Jesus to go back to the cross. He ain't doing that no more. 
God provided for us. And you know what? He says, you got you to last the next 25 years before you go into this next move. If you're not there, I can't bless you. Because there's some things that's taking a long time to get out of you. So I could have built a mega church back the first two, three years, but God was still dealing with me. Because when I got saved, I was only saved two years and 11 months. And God called me out just like he did with Barnabas and them. They were saved one year. He says, now separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work of the men. They were saved one year in that church. One year. And God got a hold of those guys and turned the world upside down because of the Holy Spirit. It ain't about what you know. It ain't about none of that stuff that you learn in some of these churches that be preaching that stuff. It's all about the Holy Ghost. It's all about 3,000 people get saved. He can shake a whole city if he wants to. God can do whatever he wants. You know what? He, he can change you. I know, I know the devil be telling them that he can't change certain people, that we can't change, and we'll always be the same, and we'll always, that's why he sends the comforter. You know what the comforter is? He sent it to you because he knew you were going to need a comforter. I'm speaking to you, Aisha, because God knows what you need. But he says, he, listen to this. He knows you needed a comforter. You know what a comforter does? He takes your situation and he makes it livable. He makes it livable. And then he'll put your eyes on the things that you can't handle. The other stuff, he'll start handling. God's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get your attention. The only thing I'm telling you is he's doing it through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And he's saying in so many ways, I got you. I got your kids. I, they're over here. And they're over here. I know some tough things have happened. But he says, I got you. I got you. Listen. The Holy Spirit is active. It's active. It's active. Look at look at your look at your big brother. It's active. That's the Holy Ghost all over him. That's the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you something, people. When he comes to a church, he speaks to the church. He cleanses the church. He heals the church. He does all of this for the people. But it's going to be up to you to receive it. Otherwise, you'll be forever looking. I don't want to keep looking for where my blessing is. I just want to keep following the breaker who's listening to it, who's making a pathway for my blessings. That's what he's doing. That's what you call the breaker's anointing. He's making a pathway for everything that I'm going to do. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you something, man, that Sometimes we, we, we struggle, but God wants to do some amazing things in our lives. And if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to move, you're going to always rush him. You're going to always rush him. Then you'll find yourself alone. You'll find yourself alone trying to do for yourself what the Holy Spirit has already done. Every eye closed. I dare you to put in your mind and say, I'm going to break, I'm going to break poverty. I'm going to break poverty. I'm, I'm not going to be this way again. I'm not going to be this way again. I'm not going to be this way again. I'm going to break it. Generational curse. My children are going to be blessed. Listen to this while your eyes are closed. Are you going to pass down generation of poverty or are you going to pass down a generation of wealth? Or do they got to do it for themselves? What are you passing down? The Holy Spirit can only help you. I'm passing a generation of wealth to my family. I'm not going to leave here without leaving them something.
It's your responsibility to break the curse. Somebody say it starts with me. Hallelujah. Go ahead and sing something. So I yield to you and to your careful hands. Lord, I trust you. I don't need to understand. Holy Spirit, speak to us. So I yield to you and to your care. I thank you for the finished work of Christ. Lord, I trust you. I don't need to Thank you, God, for providing. Thank you for providing. So make me a vessel. And make me a Yes, it hurts. Make me whatever. When Christmas comes around. And I don't have enough. Yes, it hurts when the fourth comes around and I can't get my kids the things that other kids have. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it hurts. Thanksgiving comes around and I, I, I've got to stand in soup lines and I've got to do this. And, you know, I, I don't want. I got to break the back of poverty. Lord, I trust you, I don't need to understand. You said give, and it shall come back. So make me a vessel. You said store. Make me And you would rebuke. rebuke. Make me whatever. You would rebuke. You want me to be. The devourer. I can't do it on my own. I cannot do it on my own. I hurt when I try, and I can't do it. So many people I want to be a blessing to, and I can't. I can't. I can't you want me to be it's because I, I have poverty a mentality of, of poverty and all you have given me I like the resources Jesus, that people needed out of me. we can't be a church that lack resources Jesus, bring new wine out of me. I need you to stand to your feet Stand to your feet. That's all right. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Listen. Here we go. You got to make a decision. How do I want to live? And what curse am I passing down to the next generation? Are you going to pass down a generation of wealth? Or are you going to live in that poverty mentality and say, you know what, this is all I can do and they just got to get over it and they just got to deal with it like this. Are you going to stay like that or are you going to let God do something in your life? Because I'm going to tell you something. It hurts. It used to hurt me so bad when I was messed up and I had a poverty mentality and Christmas came around and I couldn't do nothing for nobody. And I was the parent. Couldn't do nothing for nobody. I know it hurts. That's why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is your comforter. Because he knows where you are. And he knows how to teach you how to get to the places that God wants you to be. You can't keep storing up everything that you have in one place. You got to start learning how to diversify your funds. You got to start learning how to think out of the ghetto, man, because our minds be ghetto, man. We, some of you never even heard of diversify. You got to start learning how to put money in different places. Do what God tells you first and then start investing in different places. Don't give Dillard's all of your, all your money. Don't give Gucci all of your money. Don't give Prada all of your money. 
Don't give those folks because they're getting rich off of you and you ain't got nothing. They getting rich. You see them on TV smiling. Ain't nothing wrong with having it. But don't let it have you. Because I'm never going to buy something at that I should have been paying my bills with. Learn how to diversify your... That, see, the problem it is, is this. We shout and we jump, and then we leave the church. Can't give to the church, can't do nothing in the church because we're in debt. And every time you give to God, you, you get mad and you get hurt. We're trying, to, we're trying to buy a brand new building. We can't buy a brand new building with... With, with, listen to this, with, 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 with a property mentality, we'll get the billing and then everybody will not want to tithe and give and we got $2 million worth of property and, and, and who's going to pay for that? It would be cool to your children running through there and playing hoops and all of that stuff and then before you know it, the mentality of people is like, we don't pay bills. No, if you're going to be a part of this church, we're going to teach you to have your own. Get, get your job. Get your, get your income together. Get your mind together. Get your heart together. Break these cycles in your life so that you can make a cycle. You know, you, know, you, know, you, you got you to gotta get to a place where you have your own. So get out of your mama's house. Get out of your daddy's house. If you're an adult, start acting like an adult. When I was a child, I act like a child. I reason like a child. Start getting ready to get on your own. Third wave of start learning. If you can buy a $100 pair of gym shoes, you can pay your tithes. Come on, talk to me. You can, buy, you can do all of this stuff. You can do stuff. And you, and you can start sowing and believing God for great things. That's how God does. And when you do that, watch and see what happens to your life. First time I started sowing, I got hooked. I've been giving ever since. You know what I got hooked on? I got hooked on what God did for me afterwards. He protected me. You know what I mean by protecting? It's like when something bad happened, I had something in the bank that I could pay that bill. Something unexpected. God funded me for the unexpected. Are you funded for the unexpected? You know what unexpected is? Something happened or a need arises and, and you need to get it done. That's what he says. I'll protect you from the devour. This is how you break me at that mentality. Instead of living in the ghetto, you'll be buying up everything in there. You own everything. And the only thing you go back there for is some chicken wings and some, some mild sauce, some french fries, something like that. And you live your life. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and we're going to break the back. Amen. And if that's you, you're saying that, man, you know what? I'm here. And I, I, I know that this was all about me. I, I, want, I want to see you. I want to see you. You said, you're, I'm going to break problems. That, I'm not passing down a generation. A generation that doesn't have wealth. Come on, think about it. Think about it. Come on. This is how you break it. This is how you break it. You make a decision. I want you to sing, man. Just, just right here, right where you are. You bring it in, bring it in. Say, I'm not passing down the generation of what I have. I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna give them more. I'm gonna give them more. You know the hard part about lack is that when you don't know that you're lacking. You think this is the way it's supposed to be. You see other people with different shades of color, you think that they're supposed to be more blessed than you. We taught ourselves that. No, no, no. Ain't nobody's supposed to be more blessed than a child of God. Come on, believe God. It's already there. Holy Spirit is going to bless you. He's active. Jesus wouldn't have died for you if he didn't want to bless you. He died for you because you were chosen. You were called. You were separated. That's what keeps me going. 28 years from the day I got saved, it keeps me going because I realize what the Lord has done for me. And if you don't realize, you don't start realizing, you'll listen to the devil more than you listen to God. 
I'm going to break that back. Say, man, my grandkids are going to be blessed. My children are going to be blessed. My church is going to be blessed. Come on. Yeah, you know what I mean? My family is going to be blessed. Come on. Speak that thing. Speak that thing. My daughter, my son's going to be blessed. And the devil can't do nothing about it because God has chosen me. He's chosen me. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Break every curse in this room, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. You've provided for us. You've stayed holy. You've given us an example of whom we should be. You sent us salvation. You broke every curse. You've gone before us, and now you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us with everything that we need. And you speak to our church. You speak to us. Break it right now. Open your mouths and say, this is the last day. This is the last day. I'm going to start working towards my future. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit help me. He's your helper. You can't do it on your own. He's your helper. Listen. He's your helper. Let him help you. Let him help you. Let him help you. Quit trying to do it on your own. God is handpicked some people to help you, and they're in this church. Quit running. The Holy Spirit is here. And I believe he wants to separate some of you and he wants to break you, separate you from poverty. He wants to separate you from sin and he's trying to convict some of you like we were talking about Friday night. He wants to do this, but you got to let him help you. Let him help you. Listen, we're done. I'm going to tell you like this. If you don't let the Holy Spirit help you, you're not going to go very far.